Hello guys and welcome back. In this video I'm going to talk about the mitral valve E-point septal separation. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like this video and to subscribe to my channel. So let's start. So let's start with the definition. The mitral valve E-point septal separation is an echocardiographic measurement of the minimal separation between the anterior mitral valve leaflet at its E-point and the interventricular septum. Mitral valve E-point septal separation was found to be easily measured, reproducible and independent of patient position or heart rate changes. The mitral valve E-point septal separation is widely used as an M-mode echocardiographic indicator of normal or abnormal left ventricular ejection fraction. Other M-mode echocardiographic estimates of left ventricular function, like fractional shortening, have limited utility in the presence of abnormal septal motion. So what's determined that mitral valve E-point septal separation is valid as an indicator of the presence of a normal or abnormal ejection fraction, regardless of abnormalities of septal motion. When compared with other echocardiographic indexes of ventricular function, E-point septal separation correlated more closely with angiographic ejection fraction and was more useful in discriminating between patients with normal and those with low ejection fraction. This index appears to be especially useful because of the simplicity of its determination and its reliability in patients with coronary artery disease. Now, what are the uses of this measurement in advanced critical care ultrasound? Often, hypotensive or acutely dysnaic patients present to the emergency department in significant distress and emergency physicians must work quickly to evaluate, stabilize and treat these patients. However, in the past, determining whether there was a cardiac etiology to these presentations often relied solely on history physical exam and various biochemical markers. Point of care ultrasound has increasingly been adopted as a tool to assess cardiac function and specifically left ventricular ejection fraction. Different methods can be used to estimate left ventricular ejection fraction but they can have large interreader variability and require significant cardiac point-of-care ultrasound experience. Emergency physicians has been shown to be accurate at visual estimation of the left ventricular ejection fraction without quantitative measurements. However, There is still value in a quick and easy quantitative measurement of the left ventricular ejection fraction. Objective measurements can be helpful for early learners who are not yet confident in visual left ventricular ejection fraction estimation. They are easier to communicate with consultants and colleagues and they can be compared to previous values. The mitral valve E-point septal separation is an easy measurement to obtain that is accurate in estimating the left ventricular ejection fraction. 
So the mitral valve E-point septal separation is basically a measurement of how close the anterior mitral valve leaflet comes towards the interventricular septum and has been shown to be a quick and easy method for estimating left ventricular ejection fraction. Let's talk a little bit about the anatomy and pathophysiology of this measurement. Blood flow is determined by pressure gradients, where blood will travel from areas of high pressure to low pressure. Such a pressure gradient exists between the left atrium and left ventricle. During diastole, the left ventricle relaxes and the intraventricular pressure decreases until the pressure falls below that of the left intraatrial pressure. When the left atrial pressure exceeds the left ventricular pressure, the mitral valve opens and blood passively flows from the higher pressure atrium to the lower pressure ventricle. This occurs early in diastole and the blood flow from atrium to ventricle is further assisted by a natural contraction later in diastole. In a healthy individual, the atrial ventricular gradient is sufficient to open the mitral valve and bring the anterior mitral valve leaflet in proximity or contact with the intraventricular septum. In the case of reduced left ventricular ejection fraction, the diastolic pressure inside the left ventricle increases due to a decreased ability to eject blood during systole. As left ventricular ejection fraction decreases, the ventricular diastolic pressure increases and the atrial ventricular gradient decreases, leading to a decreased flow rate from atrium to ventricle during diastole, and thus a decreased mitral valve opening. That paired with left ventricular dilatation leads to an increased distance between the anterior mitral valve leaflet and the intraventricular septum during diastole which can be used as a surrogate marker for left ventricular function. Now, how can we measure the mitral valve E-point septal separation? First, you have to know that you can measure the E-point septal separation in the parasternal long axis view or the parasternal short axis view of the heart which gives a view of the left ventricle and is often used to assess its function. Now you can see a yellow line in these two views. On the left, the yellow line is showing the correct M-mode cursor placement in the parasternal long axis view. On the right hand side, the yellow line is showing the correct M-mode cursor placement in the parasternal short axis view. Because we need to use M-mode, we have to know the normal mitral valve M-mode waveform. The mitral valve waveform on M-mode contains two waves and two peaks. The first wave is the E wave, which contains a larger peak called E point and corresponds to the maximal mitral valve opening in early left ventricular diastole. The second wave is a smaller wave called the A wave, which contains a smaller peak called the A point and corresponds to the atrial contraction later in left ventricular diastole. 
Also, in the normal mitral valve M mode waveform, we can visualize the septum. In a normally functioning heart, the mitral valve should open with the leaflet heating or coming very near to the interventricular septum at the E point. Thus, a healthy heart will have a very small distance between the mitral valve E point and the interventricular septum, and this distance is called the E point septal separation. Here you can see a measurement or a few measurements of the mitral valve E point septal separation. Now, what are the normal values? An E point septal separation less than 7 mm or 0.7 cm is considered normal. An E point septal separation more than 7 mm or more than 0.7 cm is evidence of reduced left ventricular ejection fraction. We cannot estimate exactly the severity of the systolic dysfunction, but a knee point septal separation more than 13 mm or more than 1.3 cm correlates with severely decreased function, with an estimated left ventricular ejection fraction of around 35%. Now, let's review the parasternal long axis technique in order to obtain the mitral valve E point septal separation. Three easy steps to obtain this measurement. Number one, obtain a parasternal long axis view. Number two, place the cursor over the tip of the anterior mitral valve leaflet. And number three, turn on the M mode and measure the distance from the top of the E way, which is the E point, to the septum. Now let's review the parasternal short axis technique in order to obtain the mitral valve E point septal separation. Once again, just three simple steps to obtain this measurement. Number one, Obtain a parasternal short axis view at the mitral valve level. Number two, place the cursor across the middle of the mitral valve. And number three, turn on the M mode and measure the distance from the top of the E weight, which is called the E point to the septum. Did you know that you could use an alternative measurement? The E point septal separation is traditionally measured with M mode, but can alternatively be measured on 2D mode. Just follow these three simple steps. Number one, obtain a parasternal long axis view and ensure the anterior mitral valve leaflet and septum are well visualized. Number two, freeze the image and cycle through the previous three to five cardiac cycles, stopping on the image where the anterior mitral valve leaflet lies closest to the intraventricular septum. And number three, just measure the distance between the tip of the anterior mitral valve leaflet and the interventricular septum, as you will do on the M mode. Now, every measurement has pitfalls, although it's a quick and relatively simple surrogate measurement for left ventricular ejection fraction, there are some patient populations and situations in which the E point septal separation may give in inaccurate estimate of cardiac function. For example, patients with mitral stenosis may have poor valve opening, 
leading to a high E-point septal separation in the context of an otherwise normally functioning left ventricle. Also, patients with aortic regurgitation may also have poor anterior mitral valve leaflet motion and thus have a falsely high E-point septal separation. Off-axis measurement, regional wall motion abnormalities and left ventricular hypertrophy may also result in false interpretations concerning left ventricular ejection fraction. Patients with atrial fibrillation will lack an A point due to lack of coordinated atrial contraction and will have bit-to-bit -bit variability in E point septal separation due to the same discoordination. To improve estimations in these patients, averaging several measurements of E point septal separation is required. However, in the absence of these conditions, E-point septal separation gives a reliable, fast, quantitative measure of cardiac function that can help verify emergency physicians' visual estimations and be used to communicate the degree of cardiac dysfunction to other consultants and colleagues. So, we can conclude that the mitral valve E-point septal separation is a relatively easy and reproducible technique. This technique can be used to generate a quick estimation of left ventricular function and can help point towards a cardiac etiology in the undifferentiated patient. It is very important to keep in mind factors as discussed that may lead to false E-point septal separation interpretations. And E-point septal separation results should not preclude a more global cardiac assessment. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like this video and to subscribe to my channel. See you on another day. Bye.